Hey church, welcome to the Just Like You podcast. You are on season two, episode four. We're happy to have you here with us. You're on the pod with Sorzy. And MJ. Let's go. This is going to be a good episode. Mm. And we are so happy to announce our very special guest. Welcome, Neo. Mm. Hello. Neo, no matrix. Yeah. <laughs> I escaped the matrix. Did you? Yes. Well, we're going to get cool. into it. <laughs> um, how, how did I escape the matrix? I took the uh, red pill. That's, that is Jesus' blood. Wow. That's communion. Yes. We're going to get right into a little introduction <laughs> of Neo. Let's go. Name. Let's go. Region. Region. Let's go what you studied. Let's go. What you do now. What you do now. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah. Who are you, serve? really? Mm. Who am I? Uh, just a sinner saved by grace. Jeez. Uh, <laughs> I that might have been the best one we got so far. <laughs> no yeah. name, no nothing. <laughs> so uh, my name is Neo. It's my English name. My Chinese name is Zhu uh, I was born in China. Um, which one do I look into, by the way? You should look at us. Oh, yeah. that <laughs> will make sense. That's a conversation. Oh, well, yeah. There goes the conversation. Yeah. Neo's over there. So, um, <laughs> born in China, and uh, yeah, N I graduated from McMaster. Mm -hmm. uh, I did math and physics, and now I'm working for Engage Spaces. It's powering your local apps. So, wow. Yeah. yeah. Do you like your boss? I do. He paid you to say that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. Well, Are, they're actually sponsoring this episode of the podcast. Mm -hmm. Here we Thank go. Thank you, Engage yeah. Spaces. Shout out. Mm -hmm. Good, good, good. Well, um, so you're obviously at the McMaster region. And when did you graduate? I graduated 2023. Cool. Yeah. Cool. Been out of school mm. for a little bit. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Okay. Well, we are going to do a little bit of an icebreaker question. You never know what's getting thrown at you with these questions. Uh -oh. And MJ's got a good one. It's a really good one. Okay. There, there were two that we were... Like, debating yeah but i think this one's the better one <laughs> especially for you oh really wow. mm -hmm. so if you had 25 hours in a day so one extra hour mm -hmm. what would you do with that extra hour <laughs> wow i mean for the rest of my life or just yeah, one day for the rest of your life for the rest of my life wow Another hour of Devos. <laughs> <laughs> I'd get ahead. Yeah. Finish by Wednesday. I don't know. One more hour added to my life. That's that's a lot of hours. Yeah. Mm. Right now, maybe I should use that to practice guitar. Oh. Yeah. I'm learning that from uh, Nigel. Okay. Nice. My my roommate. And uh, yeah, it's, it's going. Yeah. Shout out Nigel. So yeah. how often do you practice now? Uh, I need an extra hour to keep that, uh, you know, time okay. high. Yeah, not enough. So you practice reason. like what, 30 minutes a day? Uh, it's not daily. Oh, it's okay. more like an hour here and there. Okay. Yeah. 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 Mm. So an hour consistently, this guy would be shredding on worship. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Wow. So we should maybe tell Rach that mm. in six months or so, you'll be playing on the worship team. Hey, whatever God wants. <laughs> now up to me. I picked up guitar five times and dropped it five times. <laughs> and That's this so is going to be the sixth time, hopefully the last time. You've always dropped, like actually just like. Yes, that's, that's the mic drop, but I do it with the guitar. <laughs> yeah. Okay. okay. Yeah, Instruments no. are so frustrating sometimes. Yeah. You're like, why am I not good at this mm -hmm. <laughs> on my second day? <laughs> no. <laughs> that was me and piano. That's true. Well. Oh, you're done? Yeah. Oh, okay. I dropped that. I don't have a piano in my house. Actually, that's a lie. I do. <laughs> <laughs> I just don't play. Okay. Well, good stuff. So good you'd be shredding the guitar. Yeah. Good. And you'd be doing it consistently for an hour a day. With Nigel. So I guess With you'd have to Nigel. have the extra hour too. Yeah. The mic just cuts into his sleep. <laughs> yeah. Um. That's very thoughtful of you. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, 
Okay, so let's do first actual question. Mm. Um, it's consistent. It's the same for everyone. It is, what is the piece of scripture that has most influenced your walk with Christ over the years? Mm. Yeah, I feel like that answer always changes depending on the season you're in. Mm -hmm. mm. Um, I think currently it is John 9 and 11. Uh, so it's chapter 9, the beginning of chapter 9 uh, and 11. So the beginning of chapter 9 would be um, the story of the blind man and um, the man born blind. Uh, the disciples asking Jesus of why was he uh, born blind? Was, he, was it his sin or his parents' sin? Mm. And Jesus replied, was it neither? so that God's power can shine. And I think in a similar vein, Lazarus, the story of Lazarus also like that, of how essentially both of those answer the question of how does God, what does God do with suffering, hmm. which is to bring glory to God. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah. That's good. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Thank well. you. Um, okay. Well, there's a lot to unpack with this episode and we're just gonna kind of jump right into yeah. it um it might not be exactly in like chronological order but there's gonna be some great stories that come out of this episode um so the first question that we have for you is a little bit more general it's a it's what's not just what's your story of coming to know Christ, but specifically, um, when did you come to know Christ? And then we'll get a bit more how you got there. Mm -hmm. So when did you accept Christ? Uh, I think it was two years ago. That would be 2022. Is that right? Yeah. Yeah. Because then you got baptized. <laughs> yeah. Did you get, you got baptized got earlier baptized this year. Earlier this year, yeah. yeah. I think it was April 2023. With Andrew. Oh, so last With, year. Uh, yes, yeah. yes, yes, mm -hmm. yeah. So two years ago, I accepted Christ, and one year after, baptized. Don't wait, like me. Okay, just do it. Why right did away. you wait? Why did I wait? Uh, fear. Okay. Mm. And also just disobedience. Okay. Mm. It's also not understanding, uh, you know, the importance of Scripture of just like, you you repent your sins, you accept Jesus, you baptize, right? It's mm -hmm. like it's just what you do. And I'm just like, mm -hmm. nope, I'm going to do my thing. Yeah. Uh, there's mm -hmm. a little bit of that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And it takes, sometimes it takes a while to understand like the importance of like a public declaration of your faith and your testimony too. Mm -hmm. um, that's why some people wait mm -hmm. for baptism, but <clears throat> it's so, it's so good. Like it's, I love with our church how much we're, how much we really, really celebrate baptism. Mm -hmm. And it's just such a, such a joy-filled day. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Um, so that's kind of, we're framing the interview knowing that you came to know Christ two years ago, but mm -hmm. obviously there was a lot of life that was lived before then. Yeah. Um, so we'll kind of set the scene a little bit. Um, you mentioned you grew up in China. Mm -hmm. um, can you tell us a little bit about... Um, like the background and the culture growing up in China. Yeah, uh, I was born and raised there, and I was, I was from Dalian. It's a city northwest of Beijing. Uh, it's, it's like the same, uh, like it would be closer to Korea if like uh, that helps. Okay. Um, yeah. So I, as you know, I went to international high school for high uh, for for like high school. And I came to university in 2016 mm -hmm. um, to study physics. That was at U of T, uh, failed school, and went back home. I uh, figured something out. There was a lot of things happened there. And then 2018 came back again to Mac. And uh, yeah, five years later, I graduated. Yeah. Wow. Cool. cool. And I think it was after COVID, I really... Um, just is fed up with loneliness and just, just shutting myself in. I'm like, oh, I need to find a a community, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and that's how I reached out to the tabling booth. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, like at 
in uh, the student center of McMaster. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. I was during this summer. I just came off from my movie class. Yeah. <sighs> it was a really fun elective, by the way. Was yeah. it the film and theater? I think that's class? Yeah. the class. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I just saw the Lift Church tabling booth and I thought, hey, I've seen the Lift Church building, Rubik's 3, when I uh, get off at Emerson <laughs> and Royal. I just assume it's a powerlifting gym <laughs> for some reason. So I just Especially him. when you see panache, you're like, oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> They're definitely a gym. Yeah. So I just approach him and, and they ask about their rates. And they're like, no, we're actually you know, <laughs> lifting Jesus over here. <laughs> but either way, I think the, on the card, it says there's a bunch of activities in the summer, like the hikes and the summer retreat. So I'm like, mm, cool, yeah. I'll take it. Yeah. Cool. Awesome. Um, you're up. Yeah, I guess I'm up. Um, so you mentioned that, uh, like, out of COVID, I think ev like everyone kind of experiences like huge epidemic of loneliness. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Was that like a similar theme growing up, or like that kind of got like, um, like you kind of got like fed up with it coming out of COVID because you're like, no, I, I can't be doing this anymore. Or was it just like COVID specifically? Hmm. Um, interestingly, I think I've always appreciated solitude because that's the place that, you know, I felt more at ease. Uh, I think growing up, definitely. Um, so my dad is, uh, is a sea captain, so he's not home more than half the year. Mm. My mom runs a gym mm -hmm. and she owns a gym so she's home very late like 10 30 so i don't get really get to see both of them um and so i just a lot of time i have to learn to live on, on my own mm. and unfortunately it's also a lot of physical abuse and emotional abuse growing up mm -hmm. and the feeling of abandonment so at a very young age i have to learn to survive to harden my heart to be okay being on myself um and so that has been the narrative for me uh, most of my life. Yeah. I think something happened after COVID. I'm just like, I need to change. Mm -hmm. hmm. wow. um, yeah. And Thanks I think, for sharing that. Yeah. That's, um, yeah. Um, and it's, especially as a child, like there's, there's so much um, about abuse that, um, when you are researching like the like child psychology, it's like children don't understand and they like you, you think it's normal. And then it's not until like, we'll we'll get into it, like a, an experience of real love, which you had um, when you got more introduced to, to church and church community. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, but as a child, you always think that how you grow up is normal because you base normal off of the adults that are around you. Yeah. Yeah. Honestly, yeah. Mm -hmm. Like family is, I'm an only child. Mm -hmm. And so um, I think uh, my parents' marriage has, was failing when it happened. So like it, back then I didn't understand that. So mm -hmm. I just thought that's just what it is. You know, mm -hmm. coming back from school, the textbook would say like, hey, you know, hey, know how your mom loves you and all that like you know be at home and kiss you meal and tucks you in like what are you talking about <laughs> <laughs> like i don't see any of this so yeah. yeah and on the other side of my family there's like gang violence and stuff mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. um yeah and you're kind of talking in our previous conversation too about just like the atheistic nature of mm. of um china as yeah. well and it kind of that probably also feeds into the like hardening of hearts like it's very mm. like more just attuned to objectivity mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. um that could have definitely played into just your story it's just another factor as well yeah i think uh like uh, speaking of hardening of heart it's just a lot of that is not my choice. It's yeah. just how I can do to survive. There's so many nights I have to cry to sleep yeah. as, a, as a kid. Yeah. It's definitely not unhealthy. 
but the culture of China is very much like atheist. Yeah. And it's very performance driven. Yeah. So if you get into a good, um, if you're born in a good place, first of all, you can go to uh, a good grade school. And then if you score well, you can go to a good high uh, middle school and high school and so forth yeah. like that. And you uh, they don't take your average over the years. It's one exam that determines everything. Mm-hmm. And uh, so that's also a lot of pressure. Mm-hmm. And, you know, China's very much pro-science. So I yeah. honestly, I, I think science is their god. Yeah. And if not the government. Um, yeah, so I, I definitely had an influence of why I loved physics. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah. Yeah, true. Um, okay, so um, you went to U of T. Mm. You failed out of that program, mm. you were saying. Um, you go back to China for a little bit, mm-hmm. and then you end up going to McMaster. Yeah. Um, and then you said with COVID that you kind of got to a point where you're like, I can't live like this anymore. Mm. What was the context, like that that season of your life? Yeah. Um, what What drove you to that point? I think is I've always been searching for meanings in some ways. And I what well, I took up physics because I thought I wanted to be a theoretical physicist to figure out like the <laughs> <Nice>. <laughs> nature of the universe. And, no, yeah. You're so- <laughs> no, I'm sorry. My bad. My bad. <laughs> yeah. That's awesome. Yeah, that, that was my that was my out, I guess from the hurt and just like, yeah, mm-hmm. I am just gonna shut off on the hurt and figure it out, like pick science as my thing. Mm-hmm. But ultimately like it, figuring out a new, uh, like a new particle doesn't really, you know, change if you're loved or not. Yeah. At the end of the day, people f- care about is, you know, if they're loved. Um, so I go through different phases of um, searching meaning. Mm-hmm. I try like, different um like career paths and all that i joined a startup when i was in china that was fun and all but like ultimately it doesn't lead to anything um i tried different hobbies you know i was really big on powerlifting i really big on bodybuilding for a while and like i joined like uh, the movie class because i thought about taking going to film school maybe i want to be a director Mm. like it's just different paths i'm shooting darts Mm-hmm. Uh, in the dark kind of just kind of see what sticks mm-hmm. wow. and but ultimately nothing can fill the idea of there's no assurance and ultimately there's just a void in my heart that i didn't realize mm-hmm. yeah mm-hmm. and i think uh, meeting church was just you know, it was an accident but definitely in a divine you know side is is everything is planned yeah. and yeah um you said something very specifically that was beautiful in our last conversation. And you kind of alluded to it there. But you were saying, um, like, if there's no God, there's no purpose. Mm-hmm. And we try to fabricate our own purpose by making, like, our passions our mission. Mm-hmm. And sometimes the question of, like, well, what am I? what was I meant to do? Mm-hmm. And um, in a world where people can, like, quote unquote, create their own purpose. Some people enjoy that because they can choose whoever they want to be. Mm. But then you said point blank, you're like, there's no assurance in that. Mm -hmm. If you're just creating or quote unquote, creating your own purpose or the illusion of creating your own purpose. Mm -hmm. Um, Like you were saying, it's kind of taking, it's kind of like throwing darts in the dark. Yeah, it's... Like if there is if there is no God, then everything's an accident. Everything begins as as an accident. It ends as an accident. You can try to assign values arbitrarily on your own. Everything's arbitrary, you know. Yeah. Uh, if there is a God, then there is a creator it's because only the creator can assign value. It created for a purpose. Mm-hmm. So it doesn't make sense that you try to come up with your own purpose. Right. Yeah. And I do, but I do also. Um, you know, sympathize with the people that 
doesn't know God, doesn't have the source they can draw purpose from. Mm-hmm. I mean, because they have to create purpose. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Because it's a terrible way to live to, yeah. to live without a purpose. So, mm-hmm. but that world is a dog eat dog world. Yeah. It's about talent. Mm-hmm. It's about who can take more. Mm-hmm. And there is, first of all, there's no love mm-hmm. in that. And when society assigns value mm. to things, yeah, it's like what what if society like doesn't assign you value? Like what do you do? Yeah. I was assigned value of my academic success was the thing. Mm-hmm. Uh, that was very much true in China. Yeah. And uh, so when I failed university out of a deep depression, loneliness, and just um, unsure of who I really want to be. Like, why am I taking this fixed class? Like, when, like, so many of my life wasn't set apart, like, that just kind of crumbled, which is part of the big part of the reason I failed school. Mm-hmm. Mm. Yeah. Um, so, in back to the season at Mac. Mm. Um, and, like, right before you or right around the time that you um, saw the tabling booth, which divine intervention, Mm. um, the Lord really stepping into your life. Mm. Um, Right around that last time we were talking, you were saying that there was, um, looking back, you're talking about the Lord really stripping away a lot of um, different type of, like the different things that you were using to fill the void. and how it was only the Lord that took away these addictions. Do you think you can speak on that a little bit if you're comfortable? Yes. Um, I think another out of a world that doesn't have any purpose is eventually you come into hedonism, which is just seizing the moment, enjoying pleasure, mm. right? And uh, yeah, I, I fell into a lot of addictions Drugs, alcohol, pornography, you know, uh, promiscuity, uh, binge eating, you, you name it. Yeah. Right. And uh, I think a big part of that is also escaping my parents and going to a new land, finally free from all the hurt. I can get to do whatever I want. Mm-hmm. So both coincided and kind of just avalanche into destruction. Mm-hmm. And I think COVID, when I'm shutting in, and like depression also takes a hit it was it was just horrible and so right after covid i went into like it was i, I want to get out but the the path i turned to is all the vices yeah so it, i think it, one day it was very horrible i almost od'd mm. at, at a friend's apartment mm. and i think that is the day i i made jesus um on this earth thankfully um and i was od i think a big part of that was also triggered by my grandmother's death who despite her only perfections were probably was probably the only person that truly loved me and i was just hallucinating dying on the sofa and i just you know i just fell into uncontrollable confession of all the hurt of all the sin I've created. And I can just see somebody looking at me. Mm. Mm. Yeah. And and after that night, the next morning, I just never felt so light. Like my heart has never been so... It's almost like I'm skipping on the way home. Mm. I've said to myself, I'll never do any of this again. I'll never mm. turn back. I was running and on the way home, I just touched my pocket and I just found the lift card <laughs> and i took the gym yeah the gym <laughs> pass and uh, that happened to be a sunday so i just went to the gathering mm-hmm. and that was my first gathering i laugh because of how like palpable the mm-hmm. lord's presence is in that in that whole story yeah and when you look back you're like that's the most divine that's the most like that's the most I've seen divine intervention in like 24 hours. 
You just happen to look in your pocket. Yeah. There's a card for Lyft. It happens to be a Sunday. You go to gathering. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Lord is powerful. Yeah. yeah. Okay, continue. Yeah. Uh, yeah, no. Uh, and then I just kept on going to to huddle. Um, uh, I didn't attend big gathering as much first because I didn't I didn't really understand the the format and I enjoyed the music a lot. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But ultimately what drove me to left church or into relationship more and more was actually to argue with people <laughs> and free food. Uh, <laughs> so, so true. <laughs> yeah. Selling point. Yeah. <laughs> so honestly shout out to Jaden and uh Dan Traffers at Symbol Church. It was so many days I just come up and just be like, hey, I just go there and argue people over Christianity, philosophy, and every day I walk home thinking I won. <laughs> <laughs> I beat them again. <laughs> but I could never figure out this question of why do they keep feeding me out of their own pockets? Mm-hmm. I couldn't understand that. But anyway, I would just keep showing up and eating their food. Um, but yeah, the Lord just keeps working in me. Um, yeah, I remember one time, uh, like that was, I don't even know, I think it was only a few months in, uh, knowing the Ensley guys, it was a uh, board game night, which is, oh, by the way, if you guys haven't been in board game night, you should, and, you know, it's a big part of how I was saved. Mm-hmm. It's always going there, playing games and Jonathan from <laughs> now well, decided to tackle me from behind. <laughs> I was just playing on the ground. I'm like, what is happening? I, and I saw him and I was so mad. <laughs> <laughs> because growing up, my mom owned a gym and she had a lot of uh, martial arts uh, mm-hmm. classes. So I took like all of them. So I, my pride could not allow <laughs> this to happen. Little did Jonathan Hayes know he was actually tackling uh, a martial <laughs> arts dream. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So I just flipped him around and then, (laughs) you know, I was very angry. So I started choking him on the neck. (laughs) Um, Yeah, (laughs) it it was was not good. Um, So uh, after going home, I I still feel like self-righteous about it. Like maybe he should learn the lesson. So when I was not to (laughs) tackle somebody just from behind. But the next morning I hear my door, door was knocked and I opened the door. I saw him like. (laughs) <laughs> hey he's like hey do you want to come to my birthday party <laughs> i'm like dude how's your neck <laughs> it's like yeah it's okay like come and i just went to the car and like later we went to the uh is it called hilda the the battleship i don't it, know what's up bayfront know, though. Though. It's downtown hamilton <laughs> bayfront it's a warship we went in that to see everything it was amazing but like that was the first time just seeing actual like grace mm-hmm. shown through someone that even if i wronged them you know they can still come back like that is you know, jesus love yeah 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 i can definitely see how that would be a a huge moment of realization this what this is what love is and this is what i've probably been missing for mm-hmm. a lot of years um kind of on that note now looking back from um like knowing now that you know christ's love you've been baptized all the all the beautiful things Mm. um there's a couple stories that you specifically shared with us of times that you could see um the lord working even though you didn't know it at the time um and i'd love if you could speak on that a little bit yeah one uh Greater example is my mom's sickness. So it was 2023 summer that I got the news that my mother got cancer mm. as terminal stage bone cancer and also affected affected the lung. And um, yeah, I was devastated. Yeah. Um, yeah. Um, so like, I think at that point, I'm, I, I, I accepted Christ. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And uh yeah, so I, I I remember praying dangerous prayer of I taking the cancer and all that. I was I was so destroyed. Wow. I remember like one pink one night after Pinky, uh 
like somehow through that process, I, the, the, the thing I, that I want to do is I want to be more holy. I want to serve more. I think that was my understanding of I need to work for salvation, even for my parents. Mm -hmm. That you know that, that was kind of my mentality. So mm -hmm. I served to every uh, serving initiatives, and I'm just so done. I'm so tired, exhausted by the end of it. But somehow I was standing near the pinky line. I just felt the most serene, heavenly peace I've ever felt. Mm -hmm. Like just everything is gonna be okay. Yeah. So that's one. And then later, uh, this is a can of worm. I'm pretty sure. There's a demon casting out of me, got cast out of me, and that chased me back. Uh, uh, tried to chase me back, but they didn't come back in. But that might be an offline story. <laughs> um, there, but the, yeah, there was also I think you mentioned um, there's the high school teacher. Oh yeah, your favorite high school teacher. Mm -hmm. Looking back, one he was the reason you went to U of T in the first place, and two he was the reason you went to Mac. Yeah, that's a funny one. So um, why did I keep picking U of T and Mac? I didn't know any of the schools here. Like uh, <laughs> my favorite teacher in high school, uh, Jeff, uh, the kindest person ever. You know, uh, he went to U of T for undergrad. So I applied for one school and it was U of T and I got in. And, you know, I squandered that. So the next time I try to apply, which is, I guess I'm trying to apply for Mac. <laughs> and I got in. And um, yeah, like he told me he was a Christian when I was in high school. Didn't mean anything to me at that point. Mm -hmm. But now looking back, it's like, like God is sending messengers and lead my footstep to here all mm -hmm. along. Yeah. Yeah. And probably like looking back when he was in your life and not experiencing the type of love mm -hmm. um, that you should have in your childhood. And then him, you're saying he's one of the kindest people that you've ever met. And knowing that, like, that was definitely, like, the kindness of the Lord being, um, like, brought upon you by, mm -hmm. by this man. Mm -hmm. And it's just so beautiful when you can see, you're like, God, you were so good. I didn't know it yet. Um but like you've had me in your hands my mm -hmm. entire life. And um, and there was one more specific story mm -hmm. about um, your mom and about when she got her cancer diagnosis mm -hmm. and that, that day that I think is a really beautiful story. Yeah. So I think today is also significant because uh, – I should say yesterday. Yesterday, uh, September eleventh uh, is my mom's birthday, mm -hmm. huh. so that will mark fifteen months after she got the news of terminal stage cancer. Wow! wow. And the doctor gave her two months to to prep, and she they just did not sex treatment because like it feels like there's no hope. Um, yeah, but. I, I think when she found the day that she found out she she there's something wrong with her body is she's just walking on the street she's crossing the road and when she was in the middle of the road she just could not stop walking anymore she cannot keep move walking anymore. yeah anymore like her legs stopped listening to her and like she's obviously very confused she's looking around asking for help and um, this just lady came up after her and she helped her cross the road. And walked all the way to uh, my mom's apartment and later drove her to the massage parlor, getting informed that this is not a serious matter. Like, you can't just stay here. Drove her to the hospital, get diagnosed the whole day, drove her back. So, like, random lady. Random lady probably saved my mom's life. Wow. Later, just when they're chatting, like, she's just, just a Christian. And a Christian and as he persecute a country and like, what are the odds, right? And I think m me and my friends like kept on praying for the situation. My mom's getting healed. Um, yeah, and I believe that the Lord is gonna heal. And uh, yeah. yeah, my mom is bone cancer. She was in wheelchair. She, she got a wheelchair. 
Yeah, she's walking now. She's wow. wa- she later, like a few months later, she climbed a mountain. <laughs> what mountain? Uh, it was, uh, it was a long story. It was. Okay. They, <laughs> I think he uh, he also went to like a Buddhist temple oh, okay. to, to seek help there. Okay. Um, yeah, uh, but like, like God is so powerful. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And um, I think you said too recently it's been a time of a little bit of reconnecting between you and Mm. and your family and we can definitely um like as we end the episode we can definitely pray over um your mom your family your relationships with your family Mm. um yeah yeah is there anything else no off the top of your head no that was it that was all that we prepared. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah, I think it's just very encouraging seeing how like full circle it's come. Mm-hmm. Like just you touching on like how like the hardness of your heart coming um, like to Canada was um, in part due to like how you were raised and then how that hardness broke just through like simple interactions and also like divine intervention as well but like how you experience like god's grace and love just through like jonathan asking you to come to his birthday party yeah Yeah. and i think we hit on some major um points all really revolving around God's grace. Mm -hmm. And one, we were talking about addictions falling because of God's powerful grace and um, addictions that probably at one point felt so powerful, like they were um, taking over people's lives. Like it's, um, the Lord is so much greater than than any addiction. And... um, And really about, like, how God's very intentional love gives us a purpose. Mm. Like, we have a purpose and we have a mission. Mm. Um, And that's not anything that we can construct. Yeah. Because I tried so much to um, get out of my addictions, you mm -hmm. know, but I can't. Mm -hmm. It is. I was a slave to them. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But you got to trust someone that has conquered the world. Wow. to conquer the worldly things yeah so mm. yeah That's like good. the funny thing is like a lot of addiction dropped not because i worked for it mm-hmm. some things i didn't even pray for mm-hmm. and which is every time i fell into deep relationship with the lord and that is through struggles with uh like because i have tendency of deep depression and suicidal mm-hmm. thoughts um so it's always during those struggles i come out and god just gives me gifts mm-hmm. yeah. of one more block on knockdown yeah yeah mm-hmm. he's so good mm-hmm. he's so good and um and we can have assurance that um yeah we don't have to create ourselves we don't have to create our purpose like these are all like God tells us who we are. Um, we don't have to rely on what society, um, what society tells us our value is. We can get that from our Father, mm-hmm. and there's yeah, there's so much assurance in that. Yeah, and I think, um, yeah, we hope that this episode falls into the lap of someone who needs to hear that, because mm-hmm. um, that's such a powerful. It's a, such a powerful thing to realize. Mm-hmm. Um, one, that you are loved. And two, that you are created on purpose with a purpose. Um, I also just want to touch on, if there's time. Yeah. Uh, like, if you're suffering from just hardship, like, things that you can't even control on, right? Like, I didn't pick to be born into an abusive family. Mm-hmm. I have to walk so far to get the living water. Mm-hmm. Yeah. like how do i deal with that like that was a big part of my struggle mm-hmm. and like i picked those 
verse is because because there is ultimately assurance there's deliverance mm -hmm. you know it's god called lazarus to come out like in the past few days devo like the five kings was hidden in the caves and the enemies likes to hide in the cave and like your depression your 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 addictions and all that that likes to keep you in the room mm -hmm. and makes you think you don't have a future you don't have a hope and suicidal thoughts that comes at you mm -hmm. so the only way to get out is to take heart believe that god is greater than all that mm -hmm. and then walk out to, into the light like lazarus mm -hmm. so you know yeah. the family can take off the bondage for you so that if somebody is suicidal is hearing like this please yeah there is hope mm -hmm. yeah that's and, so good. you know, the greater part is so many days I'm suicidal. Yeah, it's all good to believe in hope, but there's days I don't have hope. Mm -hmm. So I'm still standing here now because, you know, that powerful verse, the shortest verse in the whole Bible history is Jesus wept. Mm -hmm. It's to know that it's okay you're crying because I believe the Lord is in the room crying with me because mm -hmm. he calls me friend. Mm. And that's okay. Because if the Lord of the universe loved me so much to sit here and cry with me, mm -hmm. then let me not hurry through this hurt so I can be closer to his heart. Mm. Wow. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And like there's so much, there's so much hardship in your story. And it, I, I really like how you picked that verse in, um, in John, where it talks about, um, like, I allow suffering so that um, later on it can. Um, that God's um, power can be revealed. Exactly. Mm -hmm. That was on the tip of my tongue. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 It, it, the way I like to see it is like, God's ultimately the composer or the writer of our story. Mm -hmm. But you see, like, we can be the narrator you get to pick what tone of narration you choose. It can be cynicism of saying, oh, why me? Mm -hmm. Or you can say, no, this is for God's glory. Yeah. And there is delivery. There is hope. Mm -hmm. And it's because yeah. before I was very cynical. Yeah. Yeah. And at, at some level, it is, you know, you have to own up. You have to switch the mind. You yeah. know what I'm saying? I refuse to always believe I am a victim. Right. Yeah. I'm a child of God and there is hope. And and it takes, a, honestly, a lot of um, time and spiritual maturity to, to get to that point. Mm -hmm. To say, like, I will, I will have joy in my trials because I know, I know there will be beauty on the other side. Mm -hmm. um, okay. That's mm -hmm. great. Thank you so much for sharing mm -hmm. your story. Um, can we pray for you to that. end off this episode? Okay. Mm. You got it? I got it. <sighs> Dear Heavenly Father, um, thank you for Neo. Thank you for his story. Lord, thank you how you revealed yourself to him. Thank you. How you thank you that you have written his story. Um and thank you for his willingness to share and to be open and to be vulnerable. Um, and Lord, there are some very, very important topics that were talked about, some very hard topics, um, but ultimately very um, relatable to some. Lord, we, we um, give this episode to you. We lay it at your feet. Lord, we pray that this message, this encouragement, this challenge, um, that you would put it on the hearts of the people who need to hear it. Yes. If there's anyone that's struggling um, or in a season that Neo was in, Lord, I pray that there could be deliverance, um, that you would continue revealing yourself um, to Neo, but also to those who may be struggling, who are listening to this episode, Lord. Um, I pray that um, people would know that you are so much better and that you create us um, on purpose, you create us with a purpose, that there is um, a mission that is so much bigger than ourselves. We don't have to 
try to create ourselves. Lord, you show us and you tell us who we are. Um, and we are your children and we are loved and we are called. Um, you call us by our name. Mm. And thank you for that. I want to pray um, for Neo. Um, Lord, thank you so much for him, for the man of God he has become. And I want to pray for um, the continued healing of Neo's mom. Um, I pray f- over Neo's relationship with his parents. Um, whatever restoration could look like, God, you um, you love reconciliation. Mm-hmm. And however that may look, I pray that you would continue to write the story of Neo's life um, in the realm of of his family and those relationships, Lord. Um, I pray that you would continue to bless Neo as he walks with you. Um, yeah, and Lord, thank you so much for for him and his story today. Mm-hmm. And I pray all these things in your name. Amen. Amen. Um, okay, well, it was so good. We're going to end it there. Yeah. Thanks, Neil. Yeah. yeah. Glad to be here. Yeah. Okay. Thanks, church, for tuning in, and we'll see you at the next episode.